Welcome to another episode of last week's Comics Today. I do have, so I've got, I think, six issues from this week or last week. And I've got four or five issues of free Comic Book Day at the back of this that I'll talk about as well. And at least two of them, three? Three of them I didn't read. So we will get there. But let's start. We're going to start with Jurassic League. I did get questioned at the comic shop about this because the, the guy ringing me up didn't think that this was in my wheelhouse. And I'm like, what are you kidding? It's dinosaurs. Also, it's Danny Warren Johnson, which he had correctly guessed was my original interest in getting this. He has done some fantastic work in recent years. And uh, yeah, as soon as I heard about this, I'm like, uh, I don't care. I mean, I, I do enjoy fun books not just uh, you know ultra serious things and this is a heck of a lot of fun so here we have a dinosaur dressed as batman there is sort of a a pluto disney element in that there are dinosaurs acting like dinosaurs and dinosaurs acting like people it's a little strange but uh, i got into it this by the way is brutal the storytelling wise they let me see if I can find... So this this panel here, this series of panels, is just horrifying. So this is sort of a tree that's made out of people. And you've got... I don't know. It looks like they're being held together with intestine, even though that would be completely out of scale. But maybe it's dinosaur intestine. I don't know. But uh, we've got flies sitting on people's eyes and like... Wah! It's gross. And that's, I think, page... Four, and then we get to I want to show this other thing oh check this out so yeesh you may be able to guess what's going on there but holy cow crying dinosaur yeesh yeah I think that's all I'm going to show off of the art the story is great I loved every second of this even the ones in which I was horrified and I'm definitely in for the entire series. I highly recommend it. This might be my pick of the week. I think it's going to be close. And one of those contenders this week is King Conan issue four. This is a highly emotional, fantastic read. But it is Conan versus Conan. And thus far in the series, his name has been Khan, C-O-N-N. This is uh, Conan's son. This is Conan here. He is a king and he has had a son. And... Uh, I was just talking in a different video, but you won't see that yet. Um, but I was just talking in a different video about parallel timelines, and this series has been doing that for um, the entire run so far. But we have both Conan in the present, trapped on an island, teaming up with, in a sense, Thothamon, and then we have the past, what led him to this point. And at this point in the story, in the previous issue, Conan was trying to kick his son out of the kingdom to try to make him uh, more independent, a better man in his way. This is the next step in that story. This is primarily set in the past. It's We see what happens after that, the son pushing back against his father. But uh, there is a bit on the island as well. So the dawn is breaking. There's sort of a reprieve from what had been happening on the island. But the bulk of this is what happens in the past between these two. And it is... It's also brutal, much like this. But uh, just a, an amazing read. Highly recommend this series. I know some people got upset with... Jason Aaron in particular, but the Conan series and his depiction of a Native American character. And there's there's some merit to that complaint, but as far as the, the Conan elements, the series is great. I do recommend it. Son of Kala L, issue 11. I, I'm going to double check real quick, but uh, none of what's happening on this cover is what happens inside the issue. Let me verify that quickly. Yep, none of that. I don't know why, who drew that, or why, but, uh, well, I do know who drew that. I don't know why this was chosen to be the cover art, because this is not representative of, what, of what's inside. What is inside... Uh, the previous issue ended with Batman showing up to John and Lois's home 
and said that John couldn't trust his boyfriend, that they needed to leave. Is it his boyfriend? Have they established anything yet? Uh, Jay, the new character. That John shouldn't trust Jay. But we don't get a reason why. This tells the reason why Batman doesn't trust John and leaves John to decide things on his own. But it has probably the best conversation I've seen between Batman and Pa Kent. It's brilliant. Add some character to both Pa and Alfred at the same time. But yeah, it's it's a really good read. Regarding John and Jay, I guess we'll see what happens. They do start a conversation here. It doesn't reveal the entire context of what was happening, but it conversation does start here and then Bendix does some Bendix things and Luther shows up at the end so pretty standard uh, son of Kal-El I am enjoying Tom Taylor's run and uh, I guess it's up to you to decide if that's something you want to check out but I am enjoying it Lady Mechanica issue 4 this is the end of the Monster of the Ministry of Hell series and it tells you that she will return they always put a hiatus between so uh, soon it just says soon i thought there was a date a few months is what this says um yeah there's always breaks between the series and then she'll come back with four to six i think usually four issue mini series but anyway this is the end of this particular series she will return is the point i'm trying to make and this series in particular was a bit of a rough read just because it's dealing with sort of child abuse and a little bit of torture and some secrets get revealed here that puts a new spin on previous events. Um, this issue is minimal as far as those elements of torture and just horrifying things, which is good. More of it takes place in the present, I suppose. So it, it wraps up her escape from the Ministry. Then it cuts to what she does with newfound knowledge, which is to investigate this cover and this outfit. This is sort of her breaking in outfit that she uses in this issue, uh, reminiscent to me of Lobster Johnson, which I will take happily. But, um, it's interesting, and then it ends by signing up the next series, and there's some uh, secrets and some betrayal, and I really enjoy the Lady Mechanica series. I would recommend starting at Volume 1 for anyone interested. I believe all of the trades are being republished by Image currently or recently, so if you are interested, I definitely recommend checking this out. I have been enjoying it the entire time. I will show you off some of the art. So the art is one of the high points. So this page is impressive. Like it's architecture. Somebody spent a lot of time on that. And here we get her breaking in and she still looks fancy while doing it. Who dresses that like that for a burglary? As always, I recommend it and I will be waiting for the next series to start. I believe they said she's going to Siberia, so already they have a cold weather outfit designed for her. That's what's seen here. Already looks great. Armhand 17, things aren't going well for our guy, Zeke, here. He is going around town trying to help people. Most of them don't want his help. We do have this. Yeeks. I do like some of the stuff going on here. So, it is still an amusing series. So here he's talking about psychic email. ESP mail. But we've got the... This looks like a potato. It's growing things. And we've got an arm that's clearly made out of wood. It's uh, these tiny background elements. And this is a uh, extremely funny local news parody. But the series is wonderful. I highly enjoy it. I'm trying to see what else I can show off. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so I was just flipping through this, trying to find off more art that I could show off. And I forgot an element that's in this story. 
but um, basically outside forces are trying to pressure Zeke to do certain things. Um, he's getting pressure from multiple directions as far as what to do. And <laughs> I'd forgotten a scene. I was talking about how brutal Jurassic League was, but oof, wow, there's something at the end of this that's wow unexpected it's a pretty huge development as far as the story goes and i guess we will see what comes from that but also it's just like the scene itself is, is brutal and it's really well done i as always recommend farmhand highly lastly for this week is grim number one and this is boom's next big thing um, it's got a bunch of hype behind it, and people, uh, I don't know, pre-orders were huge, whatever, everything. It's the next big thing, right? And uh, I did not care at all for the writing. I think this is the first Stephanie Phillips comic I've read. If I've read something else, then I don't remember, but uh, this is her big thing, and I don't think she's a very good writer. I'm just going to say that she is fine but there is there's just something I want to say about comics in general which is I think a judge independent and mainline it's a big two comics differently and I expect more I sort of expect big two books to be mediocre and I expect independent books to be better and Grimm is what made me realize this. I think I've been doing it for a long time, but I didn't realize it until Grimm. So the writing here is adequate for big two books. It is not, it is not. It's just not as far as independent books go that good. None of the characters talk, in my opinion, in a natural way. Everything is worded sort of to to the audience instead of to the characters themselves and like it immediately rubbed me the wrong way uh, the art is great I will say that if I haven't already the art's great but it's just I don't care I mean this is a cool looking scene yeah uh, in short I don't recommend it I if people were reading preview copies of this, I don't understand what they saw in it that got everyone so up in arms about it. It's not great. It's okay, at best. With with good art. Maybe, maybe they're just interested in the art. I don't know. I don't get it. Whatever is happening here, I don't get, and I don't recommend it. And that brings us to the free comic book day issues. Because I read... Spider-Man growing up, I do like sort of keeping tabs on the guy every once in a while, and I usually pick up because Marvel has been doing, I think, two free comic book day issues per, per, per year for a couple of years, and one of them tends to be Spider-Man. I grab that just to check in with him, touch base, and it was one of the free comic book day issues a few years back where I realized, oh, I'm going to sit out Nick Spencer's run because I don't care for his writing either. So... Um, this is new writers, new creators taking over, and I don't understand why the big two keep hiring John Romita Jr., because I don't care at all for his art. Everyone looks like their nose has been broken. So we get Spider-Man fighting a mailbox. Because why not? Um, it does give you a reason why, but um, that's his story. And then we have this big convoluted thing happening with Venom and some symbiotes and his son. And I could not care less about any of those stories. And then we get to the Avengers at the end of this. And this, um, it, I don't see credits for any of this, but I got to this face and I'm like, oh, Greg Land must have drawn this. Because that is absolutely a Greg Land face. But the Avengers, this is um, All Out Avengers, which, uh, is that a new title? Aren't the two current ones just Wordless Avengers and Avengers Forever? So is this something new? It does appear to be 
Jason Aaron's current team, but I don't. I, once again, whoever wrote and drew this, I don't care at all for any of their work either. So there's that. From Viz, we get two stories. The first one is Kaiju 8, which I'm intrigued by. And the second one is this Sakamoto Days. Um, in this, there's a guy who is a secret kaiju, and he's trying to keep a low profile. This is what he turns into. I don't think he's extra large, so I don't know in what context they're using the word kaiju. He appears to be human-sized even when he looks like this, so I guess we'll see or uh, keep reading to learn more. The other story is this Sakamoto Days, this uh, lead guy here. It's revealed he used to be an assassin and now he is running a shop. And this story is all about him trying to buy a backpack for his daughter. It's it's really good. It's ultra dramatic and it's also excellent. But here is some of the art. So this is the guy from the cover. And the other story is, let me see if I can find one of these dramatic pages. Well, here's a good splash page giving nothing away. I grabbed this because it looked interesting. Also, my wife reads a ton of manga. I brought this home and she said that she had already pre-ordered both of these series that haven't arrived yet, but um, I think she's getting a shipment soon. So uh, I will probably try these out. They both seem interesting. Next up, I grabbed the Avengers. Well, it's, it's really Judgment Day. It's the Avengers X-Men Eternals crossover and I cannot get past the first page on this. I open it up and it's it's both a wall of words and I, I've, I've never made it past this page but uh, I, I haven't even read it because it's blue text on back black backgrounds and I'm like this is the worst choice. Who decided this? I'm like this is idiotic. But the whole thing is just a wall of text and I, I'm not reading this. It kind of looks nice. I mean, this is a, that's a cool looking panel. But I'm not, I'm not reading all that. So that is, I, mm. the point here is I will be sitting out to Judgment Day because there's, uh, if this is their representative tease for that series, then they've done an excellent job of convincing me that I should not read it. Next up, and I do have one more. I thought this was the last, but uh, I've got another one. So, Dark Crisis. This is a tease for DC's big summer event, and I... Um, DC have been doing this... Well, here's a great example. Just nostalgic-based navel-gazing for years, and I don't care about how great things used to be. And now it's dark, and uh, everyone's dead. But man, things used to be great. I don't care. This also convinced me not to read Dark Crisis. So, good job. You gave me a free comic to know not to spend money on a bunch of issues in the coming months. Great. Awesome. Lastly, for real this time, is the Humanoids book, which is focused on the Incall universe. And the big thing here. There are some stories I still need to read, which is true in more ways than one. But I didn't finish reading the previews here. I do want to get to this, which is the reading order, because I was kind of surprised by some of this. So I've got the three. I thought I had all of the in call. I have the, I have the four, and I have the final. I was not aware that there was an after the in call also by Mobius so I need to track this one down but I my big introduction was the Meta Barons which I loved I bought Kastaka but have not read it so I need to put this on my to-do list and then I read Technopriests I own this as well this is good it's not great I don't think but it's epic as hell like the story is just massive and then some of this i've heard good things about the second cycle of the meta barons i have not tried any of it but uh hopefully i'll read some of this and see what else to try and the lastly weapons of the meta barons 
I was aware of this, but I didn't realize Jodorowsky had written it. So I need to pick this one up, I think, as well. And that, that is this in a nutshell. There's previews in here for multiple series that are expanding the Meta Barons. I'm going to call it the Meta Barons universe because that's where I got into, but they're calling it the in calling universe. Whatever, that's fine. But there are, I think, three stories in here, previews for things coming somewhere. So here, coming winter, coming next year. So I gotta read those, see if any of that catches my interest. And we have this one as well, which pretty recognizable cover. I will read this and make a determination based on that. And then um, if you see any future videos from these books, you know that I liked it and bought it. But uh, this is the one that I haven't read so far. And these are the two that I kind of refused and gave up on reading. This is the one I did read and thankfully now realize that I can skip the next few years of Spider-Man and Venom for as long as Ewing and Wells are writing. I do not care. This was a success. I'm glad I got this. Although, really, my wife had already placed orders before I got this. So, in my opinion, it's a success for me, but they're already going to be in my house in a couple of months. Anyway, as far as pick of the week for things that I bought, uh, Farmhand, Conan, I'm going to give it a three-way tie, which I think is my first time ever. But Farmhand, Conan, and Jurassic League are all getting pick of the week, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm going to stick to that. Wildly different books, but all wonderful. Uh, I feel like this is going to be a long video, but that is everything that I grabbed this past week. As always, I get all of my books from a local comic shop. If you don't know where yours is, you can use this URL to find the one closest to you. Thanks for watching.